Hey everyone, uh, it's a very sad day today. We just lost uh, dear old Terry Jones of Monty Python fame. Um, and obviously Terry has fans all around the world, including me. Um, his work was brilliant. Um, but I figured that I might soften the blow a little bit um, for some of you because I happen to have the greatest Terry Jones story of all time. Um, so hopefully you can indulge me for a bit and it might put a smile on your face. Um, back in 1994, I was working with Kevin Eastman. I had been working for Tundra Publishing and Kevin and I had developed a TV show together and I had flown into Los Angeles from Great Britain. Um, so I was really, really tired. I happened to know the exact day that this story happened. I believe it was January the 17th of 1994. And the reason I know is because I flew into Los Angeles the day of the Northridge earthquakes. The place is on fire. The ground is really wobbly. Uh, I'm not used to earthquakes. And so I was incredibly jet lagged. Get into the hotel, which was called the Sunset Marquee. And it was on the Sunset Strip. And it was really, really expensive. And I was having this bizarre moment. I was clearly jet lagged. So I looked like a druggie, I think. Um, and the people up front were absolutely convinced that I was the drummer for Metallica, which I kept telling them I'm not. And they kept handing me um, messages for the guy under my door and I would take them up to the front desk and I'd say, I promise you I'm not the drummer from Metallica. And they'd say, absolutely, sir, your secret's safe with us. And I'm like, no, no, I'm not the drummer from Metallica. But cut a long story short, um, when I get in, Kevin Eastman, uh, who, you know, is one of my best friends in all the world, um, said, hey, Paul, you know, why don't you come to the Playboy Mansion tonight? And I said, I'll be honest with you, man, I'm just really tired and I don't really feel like going to the Playboy Mansion. And he thought I was crazy and I probably was. Um, but, you know, the ground is shaking, everything's nuts. And so Kevin heads off to the Playboy Mansion and I go down to the bar where I promptly run into Ian Asbury from The Cult. So I chatted with him and Bill Maher, who is, you know, even in those days was, was pretty well known. And we just sat around in the pub and I'm like, okay, that's it. And I'm going to bed. So I wake up in the morning and because of the nature of this place, the Sunset Marquee, um, I go out to breakfast and I'm not really used to it, but this apparently was a place where everybody would stay. And I sit down and I look up and Roger Moore is eating his eggs right across the table from me and Bruce Springsteen is sitting sort of over there. And it was just this bizarre moment where I think everybody's looking at me wondering who the hell this kid is and I'm nobody. But Kevin rolls in and he says, man, you should have come with me to the Playboy Mansion last night. You're never gonna guess who I ran into. Uh, it was Mon uh, Monty Python's Terry Jones. And I said, amazing. And Kevin said, yeah, he's staying at the hotel. Two minutes later, there's a cry from off and it's Terry. And he, Kevin, who is just so enamored of, of Terry Jones, uh, says, Terry, Terry, come on over here. So Terry walks over to me and Kevin. Um, and Kevin said, hey, Terry, I'd like to introduce you to my friend, Paul Jenkins. And I said, hey, Terry, um, you live near my mum. So coincidentally, a week before when I'd been in Britain, my mum had called me and my mum's a pretty wacky person. And she had called me, said, you never guess who moved in around the corner from me, Terry Jones from Monty Python. So she lived in Llanidlos, which is in mid-central Wales. And she had apparently gone down to the laundrette and Terry Jones had been down there with his wife. And she said he was very nice. And a week left after she tells me this, I'm now in Los Angeles in a swanky hotel with Terry Jones. So I say, well, Terry, you live near my mom. And he said, really? And I said, yeah, do you know Hazel from the pub? And he's like, are you Hazel's boy? So now, Kevin, who I don't know if he's ever forgiven me to this day, is now all pissed off because I'm talking with Terry, his idol, and Terry don't want to talk to anybody else. He wants to talk to me because he's a really down to earth guy and he knew my mum from the pub. And so we chat about dear old Landidlos, you know, and where he'd moved. And um, he told me, well, you know, I came into town a couple of days ago and I don't think that the guys in Monty Python, I don't know obviously the background 
But I don't think they were that enamored with agencies and agents, and they weren't really that into the way that America was kind of structured for that. And so Terry told me that he'd landed on a plane, and when he got in, they put him in a limo, and the agent that he was with had said, hey, Terry, everything's going to go great. And Terry said, yeah, thanks very much. And he said, so do you have it? And Terry said, I don't know what you're talking about. Turns out that Terry was supposed to have developed a TV show for like CBS or ABC or something, um, but no one had actually bothered to tell Terry. And he's telling me this anecdote over breakfast and we're cackling with glee because, you know, I frankly am not that into it either. And um, he said that on the way between the airport and the television studio, he just thought of an idea. And the idea he had was called Blazing Dragons and it was basically where uh, the dragons are the good guys and the knights are the bad guys. And he tells me this idea and I'm like, actually, that's a pretty good idea, Terry, you know, nice going. So he said he gets in, he doesn't even explain the idea. Everybody's like, we wanna do it, Terry, we love it. We're signing it up and it's the greatest idea. You must've worked on that for years and Terry and I are just kind of cackling like co-conspirators and, and we move on. So that might have been the end of the story, but it kind of got weirder from there, which my life always gets weirder. Um, a few months later, I get a phone call and it's from a company called Crystal Dynamics um, and they are up in San Jose. And they had asked me, they knew I did a bit of video game work and they asked me, would you be interested in working on this video game? Uh, and I said, yeah. And they said, You'd, it's by Terry Jones of Monty Python and it's called, it's called Blazing Dragons. And I went, that's funny, I know Terry. Uh, he drinks down the pub with my mum. And everybody was like, wow, that's kind of amazing. And I ended up getting the gig and I worked on Blazing Dragons, which is really funny. And I would correspond every so often with Terry, uh, you know, just email a couple of times and, and, and everything was fine, right? Uh, I think we were right, right to each other. I'm not sure there was that much email going on. Um, but we did the work. Out comes Blazing Dragons, or I should say, you know, they, they, they do their thing. I've, I've sort of left the job. And I kid you not, about six months later, I get this phone call from the producer of Blazing Dragons. And they said, Paul, I understand you know Terry. And I said, yeah, I know Terry. And they said, is there any chance that you could get him to do the voiceovers? Because we're struggling to get through to him through his agency. And I kind of knew that Terry wouldn't like that so much. And so I said, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll have a word with my mum. So I called my mum in Wales and she went down the pub and she found Terry Jones. And he ended up doing the voices for either the TV show or the game. I can't remember, but he ended up doing some of the voices because my mum went down the pub and found him. So uh, when Terry died today, um, it's funny that I got a bunch of emails and, and Facebook messages from people and they said that Terry Jones story of yours is like the craziest story ever. So uh, I figured you guys would enjoy it. Just kind of put a smile on your face. Yeah, I knew Terry, but more importantly, Terry knew my mum.